In this lesson, we are going to have a look at the graphical interpretation of the second derivative. The second derivative is determined when you differentiate the first derivative again, and this value indicates the change in gradient. If we go and have a look at this graph, we will see that initially the gradient of this graph is very big positive value. This becomes smaller and smaller positive and later on changes to a negative gradient. At a specific point, this gradient reaches its maximum negative value and then slowly starts becoming less negative. Later on, it changes to positive and bigger positive values. So if you think about a number line, this gradient started off as a big positive value, became smaller, zero and negative. And at a specific point, it turned in the other direction and became less negative, zero and positive again. This change in the gradient of the curve is called the concavity of the curve. The first part of this curve, where the gradient became smaller and smaller, is called concave down. This is when the second derivative is smaller than zero because the change in gradient is negative. The second part of our graph, where the gradient becomes more and more positive, is called concave up. And this is when the second derivative is bigger than zero because here the change in gradient is positive. The point on a curve where it changes from concave down to concave up is called the inflection point. And at this point, the second derivative is equal to zero. Let's have a look at an example of how we can apply this knowledge. Example one, function f is given, and our first question is to determine the coordinates of the point of inflection of f. We've just seen that the point of inflection is where the second derivative is equal to zero. So here we're going to start calculating the first and then the second derivative. Our first derivative here is 3x squared minus 18x plus 3. And now we're going to calculate the second derivative by differentiating this first derivative again. This will give us 6x squared minus 18. Our inflection point is where this second derivative is equal to 0, so I'm putting it equal to 0 and now I can solve x. Now we have that the x coordinate of the point of inflection is 3 and to get the y coordinate we are going to substitute 3 into the original function. This will give us a y value of minus 50. So our point of inflection is at 3 minus 50. Question B. For which values of x is f concave up? We've seen that for concave up, the second derivative will be positive or bigger than 0. And in the previous question, we already determined the second derivative. So we can immediately put this value bigger than 0 and solve x. So we can say that this function will be concave up for all values bigger than 3. The second derivative also helps us to get more information on the stationary points of a graph. There are three different types of stationary points. We have a local maximum point, a local minimum point, and a stationary inflection point. In the previous lesson, we saw that any stationary point's first derivative is equal to zero. And now using our second derivative, we are going to classify the type of stationary point. A local maximum point will always be in the part of the graph that is concave down, and therefore its second derivative will always be smaller than zero or negative. A local minimum point will always be in the part of the graph that is concave up, and therefore its second derivative will always be bigger than zero. Our first two stationary points can also be called turning points because the gradient turns from positive to negative or from negative to positive. Our third stationary point is however an exception. For this stationary point, if the gradient was positive before the stationary point, it's positive after it again or if the gradient was negative before the stationary point, it stays negative after it.
So this stationary point is called a stationary inflection point because the only thing that happens here is that the concavity changes. And this means that a stationary inflection point's second derivative is equal to zero. Let's have a look at an example on classifying stationary points. Example two, the points one minus one and three, three are the stationary points of F. Classify each of these points as a local minimum, local maximum, or stationary inflection point. Here, the first part of work was done for us because to calculate stationary points, we would usually take the derivative and put it equal to zero to calculate our x values. We are already given these two stationary points, so now we need to go and classify them. For this, we need the second derivative. So I'm going to start off calculating the first derivative so that we can use this and differentiate again to find the second derivative. We already know that our two x values of our stationary points are 1 and 3, and now we can substitute them into our second derivative. So starting off substituting 1 into x's place, we will get a value of 6. So the second derivative at x is 1 equals 6, which is bigger than 0 or positive, And therefore, the point 1 minus 1 is a local minimum point. Similarly, I will substitute the second x-coordinate of 3. And this will give us a value of minus 6. This means that the second derivative at x is 3 is equal to minus 6, which is smaller than 0. So here we will say that 3, 3 is a local maximum.